Welcome to the China Briefing. The content of the briefing includes China's property crisis is stirring protests across the country. China launches new data agency as ambitions in AI and digital economy soar. Chinese births at risk of falling below 9M in accelerating crisis. First FD, Sam Altman appears at OpenAI offices as pressure grows to reinstate him as chief. Biden 11 meeting can't paper over cracks in US-China relationship. China's property crisis is stirring protests across the country. Nikkei Asia. China's property sector is in crisis, with investment and property sales down 11% YOY, home prices falling, and major developers defaulting on their borrowings. This has led to a steep rise in protests, with Freedom House's China Descent Monitor project recording 1,777 property sector-related demonstrations between June 2022 and October 2023. These protests have been driven by home buyers and homeowners raising issues such as project delays and contract violations, as well as construction workers demanding unpaid wages. Despite the government's efforts to support the property market, popular discontent continues to grow. China launches new data agency as ambitions in AI and digital economy soar. South China Morning Post China has established a new National Data Administration, NDA, agency, under the auspices of the National Development and Reform Commission, NDRC, to develop the digital economy and strengthen regulation of the country's data pool. The NDA will create blueprints, introduce unified standards for data sharing, and support the digitalization of public services. The agency will act as a coordinator among government departments and will be responsible for driving China's digital development. The NDA will not replace the Cyberspace Administration of China, CAC, which will continue to oversee data security. The establishment of the NDA reflects China's ambition to develop its digital economy and address the challenges of managing and regulating data. Chinese births at risk of falling below 9M in accelerating crisis. Nikkei Asia. China is facing a decline in births, with estimates suggesting a drop of over 10% this year to below 9 million. The number of newborns has declined by 40% over the past five years, and the number of births in 2023 is expected to be around 7 million or 8.5 million. The declining birth rate is attributed to young people's concerns about their economic prospects, slow earnings recovery, high unemployment, and the rising cost of raising a child. The decline in births is likely to continue due to the reduction in the number of women of childbearing age and an increase in divorces. The government is encouraging women to have children and is considering raising the legal retirement age to address labor shortages. First FD Sam Altman appears at OpenAI offices as pressure grows to reinstate him as chief. Financial Times OpenAI CEO Sam Altman has reportedly been reinstated following the shock termination of his contract, at the request of investors including Microsoft. Altman had been fired by OpenAI's board on Friday, but a groundswell of support from executives, investors, and staff has led to discussions over clearing out the board and reinstating Altman. Executives at Microsoft, which has invested over $10 billion into OpenAI, were among those pushing for the CEO's return, but negotiations are ongoing. Biden 11 meeting can't paper over cracks in US-China relationship. South China Morning Post. US President Joe Biden has said that the US and China will continue to maintain high-level diplomacy and keep lines of communication open following his meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC, summit. However, the meeting also revealed deep divides between the two countries, with little expectation of a breakthrough in the near future. The Biden administration is intensifying the US-China rivalry by emphasizing democracy promotion and casting China as an authoritarian threat, while the US military is expanding its presence in the Indo-Pacific, further exacerbating tensions. Morning bid, China seems steady as she goes on rates. Reuters. China's interest rate decision and economic data from Thailand, Malaysia, and Taiwan will be the main focus for Asian markets on Monday. The People's Bank of China is expected to leave lending benchmark rates unchanged, 
while Thailand's GDP is expected to show growth in the third quarter. Malaysia and Taiwan will release trade figures for October. The markets are expected to be lighter than usual due to the US Thanksgiving holiday later in the week, but sentiment remains positive thanks to a loosening of financial conditions. US trade flop leaves Asia on its own. Bloomberg The US's Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, IPEF, which aimed to harmonize trade standards and ease digital trade in the region, may be put on pause, according to US Trade Representative Catherine Tai. The suspension will reinforce concerns that countries in the Indo-Pacific are on their own when it comes to growing trade, potentially leaving them dependent on China. The IPEF trade pillar is seen as intangible and unlikely to threaten US jobs, while the digital trade policy is meant to counter government attempts to wall off access to data. Trump-like libertarian Javier Milley wins Argentina's presidency. Washington Post. Javier Milley, a self-described radical libertarian and admirer of Donald Trump, has won Argentina's presidency with 56% of the vote. Milley, a far-right economist with no governing experience, campaigned on a message of slashing public spending, dollarizing the economy, cutting the number of government ministries, and shutting down the central bank. He has also circulated conspiracy theories and unsubstantiated claims about electoral fraud. The election represents a sharp turn to the right in Argentina and could have profound implications for the region and the world. Milley's presidency is expected to create tensions with governments he has attacked, including Brazil, and he has also been critical of China's influence in Latin America. However, it remains unclear whether Milley will be able to fulfill his mandate given his lack of governing experience, strapped financial resources, and few political allies. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the sixth dimension. It's been quite a whirlwind of news today, so let's dive right in. First, we have China's property crisis, causing protests to erupt across the country. Homebuyers, homeowners, and even construction workers are taking to the streets to voice their grievances. It seems that delays, contract violations, and unpaid wages are at the heart of these demonstrations. Despite the government's efforts to support the property market, discontent continues to grow. It seems like China's property sector is in need of some serious repair. In other news, China is further bolstering its ambitions in the digital economy with the establishment of the National Data Administration, NDA. This agency will be responsible for developing the digital economy, coordinating among government departments, and regulating data sharing. It's clear that China is determined to become a global leader in AI and digital technology. But managing and regulating data is no easy task, and the NDA will have its work cut out for it. On a different note, China is facing a decline in births, with estimates suggesting a drop of over 10% this year. Young people's concerns about their economic prospects, slow earnings recovery, and the rising cost of raising a child are all contributing to this decline. The government is encouraging women to have children and considering raising the retirement age to address labor shortages. It's a delicate balancing act for China, as it tries to address both economic and demographic challenges. In the world of tech, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman is reportedly being reinstated after being fired. Investors, including Microsoft, have pushed for Altman's return, leading to discussions about clearing out the board. It seems like there's a power struggle going on behind the scenes. Negotiations are ongoing, so we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. Moving on to international relations, the meeting between US President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping revealed deep divides between the two countries. The Biden administration is emphasizing democracy promotion and casting China as an authoritarian threat, while the US military is expanding its presence in the Indo-Pacific. It's clear that tensions are rising, and a breakthrough seems unlikely in the near future. The US-China relationship is certainly a rocky one. In the financial world, China's interest rate decision and economic data from other Asian countries will be in focus. The markets are expected to be lighter than usual due to the US Thanksgiving holiday, but sentiment remains positive. Financial conditions are loosening, and that's always a good sign. 
Lastly, in a surprising turn of events, Argentina has elected a Trump-like libertarian, Javier Milley, as its president. Milley campaigned on a platform of slashing public spending, dollarizing the economy, and shutting down the central bank. He's also been critical of China's influence in Latin America. It remains to be seen how his presidency will pan out, given his lack of governing experience and political allies. It's definitely going to be an interesting ride. And that wraps up our news roundup for today. Remember, I'm always here to bring you the latest updates from the sixth dimension. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these news stories. What do you make of China's property crisis? How do you think the US-China relationship will evolve? And what are your thoughts on Argentina's new president? Let's keep the discussion going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO brief via email.